hour. I'm going, I, I've been your age before and I get that an hour can be a long time. So I'm going to do an activity with you to, to kind of bring the energy up, right? I'm going to say, make a move, make a move. And you guys give me two solid claps. Does everyone understand that? Yeah. Make a move. <laughs> terrible, terrible. terrible. <laughs> it needs to be Chris. Solid clap. Got me? Make a move! Perfect game. Come on, brother. This is a small intimate setup, so I'm gonna know who's not clapping on top. Make a move! Make a move! Make a move! Love it, love it, love it. Alright, so like you said, I'm here to talk to you guys a little bit about how to take a tragedy and turn it into a triumph. Who in here kind of knows what that means? Can you guess what that means a little bit? Go ahead. Um learning from your failures. Learning from your failures, and more importantly, well, good answer, good answer, Luke. Learning from your failures, but more importantly, the things that you can't control. How many people in here have had some things happen to them in life that they couldn't control that made them a little sad? Just raise your, say I. I. Make a move! Make a move! And how do you, like, like, what I'm here to discuss with you guys about is how to take that thing that you didn't, didn't expect to happen and then turn it into something positive in your life. Got me? If you really think about it, we would not be connected right now had, had somebody not taken tragedy and turned it into triumph. I'm not sure who in here knows the story of Awan, but it was started by a young lady named Sarah who lost her father about eight years ago to lung cancer. And she was able to take that tragedy. I mean, who in here can imagine how tough that is to lose a, to lose a family member, right? Unexpectedly. And she was able to take that story and turn it into a business to where she doesn't even have to be in certain places and it's it's touching people, it's pu pulling people together to have like-minded situations. All right, so before we even get started, let's give Ms. Stephanie, Luke, and Mr. March, all the people that were involved in getting a warm started here, get to give them a hand. Make a move! Make a move! Make a move! Turning tragedy into triumph. Okay, me, ask me, how I, how I, what attracted me to this organization? Because this whole concept of turning a tragedy into a triumph, it has defined my life. All right. Well, who in here, does anyone have Caribbean parents? <laughs> pretty strict, isn't it? It's pretty tough. <laughs> well, when, when you're young, they tell you, I, had, I grew up in a two parent household in Silver Spring, Maryland, like you mentioned. And I had, they were from Trinidad, and they, this, is, this, was, this was my life, basically. Look, look, Ati boy. When you go to school, listen to what your teacher say. I don't want to get any calls about you misbehaving. Listen to everything your teacher say. <laughs> that sound familiar? <laughs> it makes you incredibly obedient, all right? But there was a disconnect with me because when I got to school and the teachers would call the attendants, they'd get to ask one, what's that, ask one crap? Crap what? <laughs> and I'd have to give that teacher a what? A correction as a little kid. And then this is another note you need to jot down. You do not get a second chance at a first impression. Ooh. Ooh. You guys might want to jot that down. Mental note and text it to someone. You don't get a second chance at a first impression. So my first impression of this person, this woman, this teacher, this person I was so, supposed to be so obedient to is a correction. So from that point on, there was something different. I had to find other alternative ways for acceptance. And luckily, luckily, I found football. I see a lot of athletes in there. Football was my scapegoat. I hated school. I mean, I hated the people out there. I didn't, no offense, but I couldn't stand the teachers, and it was because of that initial, all right, I'm not gonna pronounce that name right. So you guys are blessed to be a part of this organization, but more so, you're blessed if you have something that you can get out and play sports and things like that. So football was my scapegoat. I got away, it didn't matter how funny my name was, it didn't matter what I was doing. If you were working hard, if you were grinding, you were accepted, okay? So, <clears throat> Actually, you know, just to illustrate, just to illustrate, I learned my left and right playing football. <laughs> that, that's how deep I was into it. I learned it because I was the right guard, and I remember it was I formation right, 32 dive, and that means the three back goes to the two hole, which is the even number. So that's how I learned my right and left. And this is what I was seven years old. I didn't know my right and left until seven years old. Once I got to nine years old, I played for a, a well, it's a well-known organization now named the Briggs Shady White Oak Warriors. <clears throat> You guys can Google it if you want. At nine years old, my teammates and I lived through something. Lived through a tragedy, an unbelievable tragedy, okay? And it really lights the fire, it sparks the reason. It, it's what gets me to places like this. It's what gets me to organizations like this, to speak to total strangers and just give it all to you, okay? 
we, 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 the, we, this was my first time with white coach, all right? The year before, we went two and six, and they brought in a guy, his name is Coach Art, and this is my first time with white coach, all right? First time, teach like, he brought a very official feel to the program. This wasn't said verbally, but non-verbally, you could tell, Coach Art tells you to do something, you're like, okay, okay, Coach Art, because he wasn't someone's uncle, he wasn't someone's cousin, it wasn't, it didn't feel ghetto, so to speak, I hate to use that term, but it didn't feel like he just was there for his convenience. He was there because he really wanted to be. So we turned our season around. We were playing really well. We had this one team, man, named the Peppermill Pirates. Damn good. I said, damn good. I mean, listen, we were in a fourth playoff. It was a 14 playoff tournament. And we had to play them. We were playing them in the last game of the season. And we were going for the two seed. The first time we played them, we got that ass whooped. I mean, busted. I mean, I took one of the hardest hits of my life. Listen. Is anyone here in here familiar with football at all? Just say I. If you are. Just raise your hand. Wait, make it move! 